Welcome to the Folktale Project, this is Dan Charles. Today we have part two of the tale that we started on Monday, a story of two brothers and a shared love. Last we left them, Henry had stayed behind to care for his father and their estate, while his younger brother Conrad had left his betrothed, Angela, to go and fight in the Crusades, and apparently marry a Grecian woman and then bring her back home. And now, here is part two of The Brothers. A large ship was seen one day sailing along the Rhine with strange flags waving on its masts. Angela saw it from her tower, where she now spent many a long day reflecting on her unfortunate destiny, and she hastily called up the elder brother. The ship approached nearer and nearer. Soon the cries of the boatmen could be heard and the faces of the crew could be distinguished. Suddenly, the maiden uttered a cry and threw herself weeping into the arms of the knight. The latter gazed at the vessel, his brows contracted. Yes! There on board in shining armor stood his brother, with a beautiful, strange woman clinging to his arm. The ship touched land. One of the first, Conrad sprang on shore. The two watchers in the tower disappeared. A man approached Conrad and informed him that the new castle was destined for him. The same day, the impetuous knight sent notice of his arrival to Sternberg Castle, but his brother answered him, that he would wait for him on the bridge, but would only meet sword in hand the faithless lover who had deserted his betrothed. Twilight was creeping over the two castles. On the narrow ground separating the forts, the brothers strove together in a deadly fight. They were equally courageous, equally strong, those two opponents, and their swords crossed swiftly, one in righteous anger, the other in wounded pride. But soon, the elder received a blow, and the blood began to drop on his breastplate. The bushes were at this moment suddenly pushed asunder, and a maiden, veiled in white, dashed in between the fighters thrusting them from each other. It was Angela, who cried out in a despairing voice, In God's name, stop, and for your father's sake cease ere it be too late. She for whom you have drawn your swords is now going to take the veil, and will beg God day and night to forgive you, Conrad, for your falseness, and will pray him to bless you and your brother forever. Both brothers threw down their arms. Conrad, his head deeply bowed, covered his face with his hand. He did not dare to look at the maiden who stood there, a silent reproach to him. Henry took the weeping girl's hand. Come, sister, said he. Such faithlessness does not deserve your tears. They disappeared among the trees. Silently, Conrad stood gazing after them. A feeling which he had never known seemed to rise up in his heart, and bending his head, he wept bitterly. The cloister, Marienburg, lay in a valley at some distance from the castles, and there Angela found peace. A wall was soon built up between the two forts, Sternberg and Liebenstein, a silent witness to the enmity between the two brothers. Banquet followed banquet in the newly built castle, and the beautiful Grecian won great triumphs among the knights of the Rhine. But sorrow seemed to have taken possession of Sternberg Castle. Henry had not wished to move the maiden from her purpose, but from the time of her departure his strength faded away. At the foot of the mountain, he caused a cloister to be built, and a few months later he passed away from this world, just on the same day that the bells were tolling for Angela's death. The Lord of Liebenstein was not granted a lasting happiness with his beautiful wife. She fled with a knight who had enjoyed the lavish hospitality at Castle Liebenstein. Conrad, overcome by sorrow and disgrace, threw himself from a pinnacle of the castle into the depths below. The strongholds then fell into the hands of Knight Bromser of Rudesheim, and since that time have fallen into ruins. The church and cloister still remain in the valley, and are the scene of many a pilgrimage. And that is the end of the tale of the brothers. As I said, it's sad and 
nobody really comes out well in the end. This is Dan Schultz for the Folktale Project. Don't forget that you can subscribe to the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Google Play, Overcast, anywhere you like to get your podcasts. You can follow us on Twitter at Folktale Project. You can find us on Auto Radio, TuneIn Radio, iHeart Radio, Spotify, anywhere you like to listen. And you can always head over to folktaleproject.com where you'll find a new story waiting for you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And if you enjoy the podcast, please head over to Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen and leave a rating and a review. And you can also always head over to folktaleproject.com support if you'd like to buy the podcast a coffee or become a Patreon patron. As always, thank you so much for listening. <laughs>